Hi everyone, David Aragona here, taking a look at one of the undercard stakes on Whitney Saturday at Saratoga. Actually, one of the other grade one races on that Whitney Stakes Saturday. And it is race eight, the grade one test, going seven furlongs for three-year-old fillies. This always one of the most anticipated races of the summer season at Saratoga because you've got the top three-year-old fillies, some stretching out in distance, some turning back. And this race does definitely not disappoint this year. Before we take a look at the field, though, be reminded that you can now access Timeform US PPs on DRF.com. New look to Timeform US, go to DRF.com slash TFUS101 to learn more about Timeform US PPs. You can also watch these videos to learn a little more about Timeform US as we will take a look at some of the features in Timeform US in this stakes preview. Let's take a look at the field for this grade one test. And a field of eight signed on, and we've got some star power in this one. Definitely with the two runners bookending this field, the number one pretty mischievous would be considered by many to be the leader of this three-year-old Philly division right now off the heels of wins in the Kentucky Oaks and Acorn in her last couple of starts. She'll look to make it three grade one victories in a row in this test. And on the outside, we've got Maple Leaf Mel undefeated in five career starts. Definitely one of the up and coming stars of the sport. Also Muddy's Gold, who has been one of the fastest three-year-old fillies from a speed figure standpoint in this field, as well as others with talent. This test is definitely stacked with quality. Before we get to the main contenders, let's take a look at the Timeform US pace projector for this race. And I think it's worth spending some time on this pace projector because the pace is going to be an important component of this test stakes, especially with regard to the number eight Maple Leaf Mel, because she is a horse that really hasn't been headed for the early lead in any of her prior starts, but she's going to have some other speed rivals to deal with in this race in the form of the number two, clearly unhinged, as well as the horse drawn right to the inside of her, the number seven, Money's Gold, both of those rivals have plenty of early speed, so we'll see if Maple Leaf Mel is able to attain her customary position on the lead in this race. She is drawn outside of those great horses, so at least that gives her rider, Joel Rosario, some options. But you do see that red flag showing up, indicating the time form US is predicting a fast pace in this race, and that certainly would suit the number one pretty mischievous, who does get that LP flag on the pace projector, indicating that she is the highest late pace rating and the best closing kick of anybody in this test field. Well, let's go through some of the main contenders, and we'll begin by taking a look at some of the key prep races coming into this test, beginning with the Acorn Stakes, which was won by number one Pretty Mischievous last time out. And we actually have three horses coming out of this Acorn into the test. You see Pretty Mischievous highlighted there, along with runner-up Dorth Vader and the fourth-place finisher, Money's Gold. Pretty Mischievous, she was able to handle the cutback to one turn in this race, going the mile in the 16th distance, and she got a good trip from Tyler Gaff. Leone just stalked in behind what was a contested early pace, but moved up very willingly around the far turn. And at the top of the stretch, it looked like she was going to win this race easier than she did as Dorth Vader gave her all that she could handle coming to the wire there. But Pretty Mischievous was able to get her nose on the finish line first. And she's had a knack for doing that, winning six of her eight lifetime starts. She's really never put forth a bad effort. She's been a game winner of each of her last two races, prestigious races, the Kentucky Oaks and the Acorn. It's a little counterintuitive some might think to turn back in distance for this test rather than try races like the Coaching Club American Oaks or the Alabama this summer at Saratoga. But Pretty Mischievous was successful sprinting earlier in her career. She is a very handy traveler, so I think turning back to seven furlongs does make sense for her. And just based on the way this race shapes up from a pace standpoint, I think Brandon Walsh has found a favorable spot for Pretty Mischievous to try to get another grade one victory. As for the horse that gave her a real run for her money last time, the number six, Dorth Vader, there's not too much to knock about her recent form. Thought that a mile and an eighth would be too far for her in the Kentucky Oaks last time, but she actually ran pretty well in that race, was stalking a fast pace, got there in mid-stretch trying to chase home pretty mischievous, and it's never like she totally threw in the towel, finishing fifth that day, just barely beaten out of third place. She came back in the acorn last time, making her first start off a trainer switch to George Weaver as her connections are campaigning her up north for uh, this summer season, and she really improved for the new barn. As uh, you saw in that replay, she got passed by pretty mischievous and upper stretch 
but really engaged through the final eighth of a mile, coming back on that bow and nearly getting her head back in front. They came onto the wire. That 118 time form US speed figure that she earned matches that of the winner. And it really feels like she's blossoming moving into the summer season. And she's one like Pretty Mischievous that uh, should handle this turn back a distance and arguably might be even more convincing than Pretty Mischievous turning back to seven furlongs because she was very successful sprinting early in her career, actually, and one of her best speed figures going six furlongs as a two-year-old last year. So seven furlongs should be right in her wheelhouse, and she's drawn well towards the outside to get the right kind of stalking trip that she does prefer. The other horse coming out of the acorn is the number seven, Money's Gold, and she's a bit of an enigma in this race because she looked so impressive through the first three starts of her career, winning by gigantic margin, setting a track record three back at Tampa, getting a huge 125 time from US speed figure. Nobody else in this field has approached that kind of number. But she's lost her last couple of starts in a row as the favorite both times. She lost as the heavy favorite two back in the eight bills when beaten by Red Carpet Ready. And the Connections just took a shot to get a grade one victory last time at the Acorn, knowing that a mile and a 16th would probably prove to be too far for her. And she did set the pace that day before fading, but I would have liked to see her put up more of a fight. She just kind of threw in the towel in the final uh, furlong and a half of that Acorn. Now she's turning back to a better distance. She's definitely run well going seven furlongs in the past, but she is a horse that ran all of her top speed figures or those impressive victories on Lasix through the thir- first three starts of her career. Came off Lake- Lasix the last two times, and she just hasn't had that same spark in her last couple of races. And even that eight bells two back, that's a race that when you look at the run backs, it's kind of lowered in stature in retrospect because a lot of horses have come back to run poorly out of that race. Actually, Money's Gold's fourth place finish in the eight Corn is one of the better rubbacks from that eight bell. So definitely ask some questions about the form of her recent races. And also, I found this deer a formulator stat for trainer Todd Pletcher. He does not have success turning horses back in graded stakes races, routes to sprints on dirt in graded stakes. He's two for 25 over the past five years, just an 8% win rate with a 34 cent ROI, plenty of short prices in this sample. Let's move on to one of the horses that's going to take a lot of money in this race, the number eight, Maple Leaf Mel, and we'll check out the most recent of her five career victories when she won off the trainer switch to Melanie Giddings in the victory ride last time. And I'm sure many know at this point, Melanie Giddings how was involved in this filly right from the start, uh, previously serving as an assistant to Jeremiah Englehart, her original trainer. So the trainer switch definitely made a lot of sense last time out, and she was unfazed by it as she just did what she usually does, winning this race in gate-to-wire fashion, got clear in the early stages, and you can see one under a hands-and-heels ride from Joel Rosario that day. And you can see she's just been improving her speed figures in every recent start of her career, especially since coming back as a three-year-old that 120 time for you a speed figure that she earned last time it's the second highest number in this race after that big effort that money's gold put forth at tampa early in the year the thing with make me believe mel that could be a vulnerability this time is what i mentioned with regard to the pace projector she has never been headed in the early stages of her races and it does feel like there are other horses that are going to be intent on going forward in the early stages of this race so we'll see if she can adapt to stalking tactics or if she's fast enough to secure the early lead from her outside post position but there's no denying that this is a filly that possesses a ton of talent Another horse coming out of the victory rod is the number five, Interpolate, and she was just no match for Maple Leaf Mel that day. She did get off to a slow start, broke about a length slowly, made a bit of a move coming to the top of the stretch, sneaking through along the rail, but she flattened out in the late stages of that race. I would have liked to see her put in more of a closing kick, and she just kind of lost ground to the leader in the final furlong. She's kind of a one-number horse because she earned that big speed figure two back in the Beaumont in April when she nearly got the job done closing after Key of Life. But that was a race that I thought she was supposed to win because she got a great pace set up, key of life, did all the dirty work on the front end, was leg weary in the final stages, and Interpolate just seemed to hang a little bit, unable to run her down. I think she's going to have to run better than even that race if she's to be competitive here to potentially get a victory. And even a minor award might be asking a lot of a horse like this if she's unable to improve on that performance from April. 
The number two is clearly on Hinge. Let's take a look at her race last time from Santa Anita. This was an allowance victory where she beat a pretty well-regarded Bob Baffert trained rival, Pleasant, who actually took the lead coming to the quarter pole. And you could see clearly unhinged is very game battling back towards the inside to eventually stick her head back in front and earn this victory coming back off a slight layoff for trainer Michael McCarthy. She's now two for three in her career and both career victories have come over sprint distances. She looked like a filly with a ton of talent and promise when she won her debut back in February at Santa Anita. Just didn't handle the stretch out second time out and you could see she showed that grit to win last time. She's going to have to get a little faster if she's going to compete with the likes of the favorites in this race but she does figure to be a pace factor because she has plenty of early speed has been successful using front running tactics in the in the past and I think drawing inside in this race is really going to force the hand of Javier Castellano and the connections to go forward and potentially challenge Maple Leaf Mill for the early lead. One more horse to discuss in this race as I'll skip on over that big long shot tap in Josie and mention the number four Jersey Pearl, who is another long shot in this race, but one that I don't think should be completely dismissed. She's a horse that tried different surfaces early in her career, but I think her connections have figured out that dirt is definitely her preferred surface. She's now three for three on the main track, and she has earned those last two victories in Kentucky with some nice speed figures. I thought she was game to win two back under Luis Saez when she got a vigorous ride to closed down Alva Starr, who did come back to win with a nice speed figure. And then last time, she was just a dominant winner over overmatched older rivals at Ellis Park. Did get to the front end that day, and that's been the right style to use at Ellis Park, but that didn't feel like one of those speed bias days when she won on July 8th, and uh, she was impressive, earning a respectable 116 time form US speed figure, so definitely a runner that's coming into this race in good form, and also a horse that does not need the early lead to be successful, so another that figures to be pressing the pace from a stalking position in this test. Let's throw my picks for this race, and I'm going to go with a couple of runners coming out of that acorn that are turning back in distance, but I'm actually going to reverse the order of finish in the acorn and put the number six, Dorth Vader, on top. I really think this Florida bred filly is going to appreciate the turn back in distance, and she's really improved in these last couple of races against prestigious company, going longer than maybe she really wants to. I loved the grip that she showed last time in the acorn, uh, running at pretty mischievous in the late stages, and she figures to be the right kind of price in this test. I do believe that the number one pretty mischievous is the horse to beat. I've got her in there. I respect Maple Leaf Mill, but I'm a little worried about the pace scenario. And the one that I'm kind of against is the number seven, Muddy's Gold, who I just think has gone a little bit off form in her recent start. So it's the number six, Dorth Vader, for me, in the grade one test, race eight at Saratoga on Saturday. Good luck if you're playing the races this weekend.